Hello everyone, hope you are all doing well. So in this video, we'll discuss the sum of lead code weekly contest three five four. Again, a medium level problem. Um, on the easier side, because this point, this problem and the previous problem both have uh four points, right? Uh, so this one is relatively easier than the previous one. Um, uh, so yeah, let's see what the problem is asking us to do. It's minimum index of a valid split. So an element x of an integer array of length m is dominant if frequency of x into two is greater than m. Where m, where frequency of x is the number of occurrences of x in array. Note that this definition implies array can have at most one dominant element, right? I'll I'll, I'll come to this. Don't worry. You are given zero indexed integer array, okay? Nums of length n with one dominant element. This is given. You can split nums at index i into two parts from zero to i and i plus one to n minus one. But the split is valid only if you are splitting. You are choosing an index to split which lies in range zero to n minus two. Remember, less than n minus one because obviously, if you split at n n minus one, you are basically uh, taking the whole array, right? You are not splitting into two parts, right? And nums of zero to i and nums of i plus one to n minus one. That means the two sub arrays that you generate have the same dominant element. Getting it? Here, nums of i to j denotes the sub arrays of nums starting at index i and ending at j. Both ends have. Uh, both ends being inclusive, particularly if j is less than i, then this, 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 simple. Return the minimum index of a valid split if no split exists. Return minus one. Okay, what it says? So it says that you have a dominant element. What is a dominant element? Suppose the length of your array is n. Okay, then the frequency of one element is more than n by two. Is more than n by two. So obviously. You can have just one dominant element, right? Because having multiple dominant elements will lead to number of elements more than n, and this is contradiction, right? I have n elements, so I can just have one dominant element. It's a very popular problem known as majority element. You can just go and have a look. Majority element, a very very standard algorithm to basically solve this problem is a, a Moore's algorithm, right? It's a big O of n algorithm which basically tells you what is the dominant element in a in an array you can use any technique here by the way I'm, i have just used that moore's algorithm right so now you have a dominant element now what you have to do you have to choose an index suppose this is my array you have to choose an index the smallest index such that right such that in this case what happens is this part 0 to i has a dominant element obviously the dominant element will be the same element right and this element also has a dominant element and both the dominant elements are same what i mean to say <laughs> the only possible dominant element that you can have is the one that exists for the array. But in short, it says that whatever element is dominant here, let's assume x, then the same element should be dominant here as well. That is what we need to do. So we have to split the array such that this condition is satisfied and we have to choose the smallest index to split the arrays into two halves to do so. Right? Let's see this example. One, triple two. Now I know what is the dominant element here. The length is four. 2 occurs more than 4 by 2 times. That means it occurs 3 times. So yes, 2 is a dominant element, right? Let's try to split it. Let's try to split it. So if I split it here, this here the dominant element is, in the first part dominant element is 1, in this it's 2. Condition not satisfied. Let's split here. In the first part there is no dominant element, in the second it is 2. Why in the first part there is no dominant element? Because the condition is an element should occur more than n by 2 times. Not equals to n by 2, but more than n by 2 times. Let's split here. First three elements here and the last element here. Now here, 2 occurs 2 times. So yes, 2 is a dominant element. And the la the second subarray obviously has just a single element. So here also the dominant element is 2. So now the condition is satisfies. Hence, at which index do we split? Index number 0, 1, 2, 3. So we, in we split at index number 2. That's the smallest index, right? So my answer is 2. Similarly, let's come here. This one is 2, 1, 3. 1 1 1 7 1 2 1 index number 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 let's see which one is the dominant element total i have 10 elements how many elements are there uh, how many ones are there it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 yes one is the dominant element let's try to split suppose i split here then here the dominant element is 2 nothing can be done remove it what if I split here? Again, in the first array, sub array, I cannot determine the de dominant element, right? Because both the elements have frequency one. Forget about this. Let's split here at index number two. Now what happens? Two, one, three. Three elements have equal frequency. Again, no dominant element. Let's split here. 
now four elements out of these four elements two elements are two element is equals to one again no dominant element because it should occur more than n by two times let's split here when i split here to in the first part i have five elements three out of those five elements is one so that means in the first sub array yes one is the dominant element great what about the second part one two three four five i have five elements and in these five elements one two three three elements are one so again dominant element here is one here also it's one so yes condition satisfied you split at index numbers zero, four right and in this case just see the dominant element is three there is no split possible there is no split possible right because three 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 seven two two split here okay you can't have a dominant element here say out of six elements three are three split here here you have three but here you you do not have three split here right so basically we are removing an element at a time from the right sub area right so obviously there will be no majority element right the only majority element you can have is uh, three i mean dominant element so in this you return minus one right the number of elements you can have is this the value of an element can be 10 raised to power 9 simple right so i would say it, it's more of, of an implementation based problem no logic is involved right uh, not too much lo of logic is involved you can see that with the accuracy as well right all we need to do is we need to find the dominant element and then we need to traverse the array for every index index we just need to check that whether the condition is satisfied or not how do we check that in the first step we find the frequency of the majority element right it has to occur more than n by two times so it can be occurring n by min minus one n minus one times as well right so find the frequency of the dominant element right now keep on traversing the array keep on updating the length of your first sub array if the length of first sub array is x the length of the second sub array will be n minus x now if the count of the majority element i know what's my dominant element right i have already figured it out in the first step so if the dominant element the frequency of dominant element here is f1 then the frequency of the dominant element in the second part will be the total frequency of that element minus f1 simple check that for every index let's see what i have done here this is the main function this is the number of elements I have, majority elements, get majority element of nums. I've created a function. What is this function? You pass nums and this is uh, Moore's algorithm. Again, if you're not aware of it, I would highly recommend to go and see what is this algorithm. But in short, what it does is it, consider, it's, it's, it considers the elements as candidates, right? So first the zeroth element is candidate. And since the zeroth element is the candidate, the number of times it has occurred is one. Great. Now let's traverse from index number one. If the current element is equal to the candidate, increment the count, else decrement the count. Now, if the count becomes less than zero, then you get a new candidate. The current element becomes the candidate and the frequency of the candidate becomes one, right? I, again, I'll not go into the internals of this. It will be a very long video, right? So basically you return the current candidate. Remember in this algorithm, whatever candidate you get, it's not guaranteed that it's the majority element. You have to traverse the array once more to check that, okay, this is my candidate, but has it occurred more than n by two times or not? But in this problem, it says that there exists a dominant element. That is why I have not checked the condition, right? So this is the current candidate or the majority element. I come here, I get the majority element. Now I've counted the number of times the majority element has come or the dominant element has come. Now initialize your answer with minus one. Current count is, what's the number of times i have seen the majority element till now because i need to keep a track for the first sub array right and what's the length of the first sub array so it starts from zero remember i go to less than n minus one because i cannot choose the last index to split right otherwise the first sub array will include all the elements and the second sub array will be empty that is what uh, that is something we do not want right so first sub array dot length plus plus if the current element is majority element increment the count right now whenever you have done it just call a function which which tells that that which tells me that is a particular sub array. I have two sub arrays in every condition, right? Is this sub array uh, following your condition or not, right? So what do I do? I just pass the count of the majority element and the length of the sub array. So this function says that if two into element count is greater than array length, then yes, that is true. So I do that for the first sub array. For the first sub array, the, number, the frequency is current count and the length is first sub array length. And for the second, the right sub array, it's majority count minus current count right n minus first separate length if both of these conditions are satisfied that means this is the smallest index just return i if this condition is not satisfied that means your answer will be minus one and hence you return minus one simple right this is what we do uh, I, I would assume it to be an easy problem but yeah let me know if you have some issues related to the solution right or any queries that you 
have in your mind do let me know in the comment section also if you find this video useful uh, then please do like the video also do subscribe to the channel to get regular updates of the lead code contest and yeah i'll see you in the next video take care bye bye